Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. So, high places or ba uh, I'm going to say Babel buildings, but church buildings. High places or church buildings. I was coming across some st studies when I'm listening to the Old Testament. I've come across some studies uh, that I'm going over to do uh, highlighting in my other Bible I just bought. And it kind of got to me, these high places. What What's the big deal about these high places? Okay. So if you want to turn into your King James Bibles, get your King James Bibles out. Turn to 1 Kings 3, 1. Okay. 1 Kings 3, chapter 3, verse 1. And we will be reading to verse 4. And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, affinity, yep, with Pharaoh king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter, and brought her into the city of David, until he had made an end of building his own house, and the house of the Lord, and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Only the people sacrificed in high places. No, it said only. The people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. So they were doing this before uh, the house of the Lord was built. Verse 3, And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statues of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. Verse 4, And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. Sometimes only means like this is the only one left. But sometimes in the Bible you hear only like saying, this is good, 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 good. He does good in all these areas, only this is where he's not doing good. So this one thing, it still means one, but it's talking about this one area is the one part where he's not doing good. And right here it's talking about high places. They were sacrificing the high places. Now, why was he wrong to sacrifice burnt incense in high places? Okay. Numbers 21, 25. If you want to go back to Numbers. Numbers chapter 21, verse 25. Okay. This is when Israel was taking the promised land that Jesus, uh, that God, which Jesus is, promised them. And Israel took all these cities, and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbon, and in all the village thereof. For Heshbon was the city of Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab, and taken all his land out of the hand, even unto Arnon. Wherefore they speak in Proverbs, saying, Come into Heshbon, let the city of Sishon be built and prepared. For there is a fire gone out of Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sihon, it hath consumed Ar of Moab, and the Lord of, of the high places of Arnon. The Lord of the high places, Arnon. We're going to go to another verse real quick, but I'll jump the gun. Before Israel was doing it, the lost pagan world was doing it first. They had high places, and that's where they worshipped their false gods, was in these high places. So if you want to turn to Numbers 33, 51, chapter 33, 51. We're going to go all the way down to 56, all the way. So, Numbers 33, 51. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out of the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places. I'm emphasizing it because that's the most important part for the study. They are to destroy all the high places. Okay. And ye shall dispose the inhabitants. Disposes. I'm getting that wrong. And ye shall dispose 
says, the inhabitants of the land and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it. And ye shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your, fam among your families, and to the more ye shall give, the more inheritance, to the fewer ye shall give less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth. According to the tribes of your fathers ye shall inherit. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land before of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes, and thorns in your sides, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you as I thought to do unto them. Two things from this patches. They were to destroy the high places. And they were to take the people out of the land. And if they didn't, what happened? Okay. Uh, pricks in your eyes, thorns in your sides, and they shall vex you in the land wherein you dwell. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're trying to, like I said, the whole point of this study is, is we're looking and I'm realizing that the high places, trying to apply it to what we see today, is no different than these Babel buildings. These church buildings. Okay? So when you read that, when we're true, who, those of us who are truly saved, we've been in the Babel building system, and we're warning people it's not found in Scripture. Uh, people that fall into the trap of traditions of men, they're having all those problems, pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides, and shall vex you in the land wherein you dwell. We're, we're very vexed by what's going on in these Babel buildings, these church, so-called church buildings, buildings labeled churches. Okay? So, uh, the high places, remember, they had the tabernacle, okay, the tents, uh, where they had all the laws, where you had to go to the door of the tabernacle, you do your sacrifices there. So when they didn't have the house of the Lord built yet by Solomon, they had the tabernacle. That's where they're supposed to do their sacrifices. What happened? They started conforming to the world. They didn't take out everybody like they were supposed to, so they became a snare to them. They started adopting their practices. Now as we see with Solomon, he still sacrificed to the Lord his God, absolutely, but he did it in a high place and God held him accountable to it. That's why he says only he sacrificed in high places. He was supposed to, once he built the house of the Lord, that's where his, the sacrifices are supposed to be. Before that, the tabernacle. Okay. The one that moved around, they built the tents, they picked it up. It starts moving, then they put it down. Okay, That's how it was supposed to be. But they saw all these lost people. They didn't throw them all out. I'm sorry about the dogs. I'm still dog sitting. Um, they didn't throw them out. Okay, So then they started adopting their practices. So... Wrong to sacrifice in high places because that's what the lost world did. Okay, they started adopting the things from the lost world. We talked about the tabernacle. The Jewish people were to separate from the lost world. They were supposed to be separate, the chosen people. Now, how does that apply today? Are we supposed to be separate from the world? Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We're not to conform to the world. We're supposed to be separate. The lost world as a whole, what do they do? They have their temples where their false gods are. What's happening today in the so-called professing Christian world? It starts with the Catholic Church and branches out to all these false religions. They have their temple made with hands where you get to go worship false gods. Okay, The Protestant Reformation, they wanted to reform the Catholic Church. They didn't want to be separate from it completely. What did we just read there about them being a snare? If you don't take them out completely, they're going to be a snare to you. And it was. They started, doing the pra they started adopting the practices of the heathens, these people worshiping false gods. What happened? They didn't say, we want nothing to do with the Catholic Church. They just wanted to reform it. So because they didn't push the Catholic Church out completely, what happened? There's a lot of practices in these uh, so-called church buildings that are anti-scriptural. They're not just not in scripture, but they're anti-scripture, and it allowed false gods to come in. 
Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them. You know the Protestant Reformation? They didn't come out from among them completely. Uh, the Jewish people didn't come uh, chase those people out completely. And be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you. Okay? We're to be separate from the lost world. We're not supposed to be having the same practice as the lost world. We're not supposed to be taking things that are sinful and wicked and trying to say, oh, we can put a Jesus stamp on it, and now it's okay. So let's get to the meat of this study that I was looking into, and God's like, I just wanted to get that down where, A, what's the big thing about these high places? They're the wrong place to be given sacrifice to the Lord. Okay? That's what the lost world did. And you read through the Bible, there's people that did right in God's eyes, except they didn't take down the high places. So what's going on? There was high places that people were still sacrificing to the Lord, but that's not the place they were supposed to do it in. They were supposed to do it at the temple. And what happened to those high places? You'd have a king that would do right by the Lord, and when those, and those high places were up, the next king would turn around and start sacrificing to false gods in those high places. You read all about it. You had a king that took down the high places. Next thing you know, you have the next king. He rebuilds the high places and they start worshiping false gods. That's what the high places are in. Uh, they correlate with, they just go hand in hand with false gods. Mm -hmm. Even if you're trying to do good, it's still wrong in God's eyes. And we'll see this at the end of this study. So, 1 Kings 12, 28. 1 Kings 12, 28. Twenty-eight through thirty-one. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. You know where the temple is? That's where they're supposed to do sacrifices. It's too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before one, even unto Dan. And he made a house of high places, and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. Okay. What's going on here? It's just too far to go. So I'll make you a place here to worship. But what does he also do? Well, let me make two false gods. I mean, gods that brought you out of Egypt. Okay. Now, there's three things going on here if you look at it. It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Okay? That almost goes into a good study for dangers of convenience. Okay? It's convenient to do this, yet is it right or is it profitable? There's the two things. Is it a sin? Because most oftentimes being things that are convenient are sin, or it's not profitable, or it's to give you too much free time sometimes doing things the easy way, not the easy way, that's convenient, like popping something in the microwave and cook it, and I'm trying to get away from the microwave. It's not good for you, but it's quick and easy, and it's convenient. It's right there. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing you can look at. But for the study, three things are going on here. Notice it said... Uh, he made an house. So what do we see today going on? People are building buildings and calling them churches. He made a house. Okay. Of high places. So you build a church and you tell people, hey, this is the place where you need to worship. This is the place that you need to come to to worship. And what are they doing these churches? Uh, up there it said, it is too much to go up to Jerusalem. He made two calves of gold. So what does he do? Okay. Putting up curses. How many Babel buildings have crosses left and right all through them? The Bible says, Galatians 3.13, that uh, 
Cursed is every cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree. Okay. The cross is a curse. They were cursing Jesus on the cross. Some people will say, "Well, I have the cross to remind myself of what Jesus did for me." Uh, I've gotten crosses out of my life, and I know other brothers and sisters in Christ out there. You've gotten crosses out of your life. I remember very well almost every day what Jesus Christ did for me. Every time, every day at the end of the day, I have to ask God for forgiveness for the sins I've committed that day. My thoughts go in places they're not supposed to when I fall into temptation. Uh, every time I have joy and peace, giving God glory and thanks in all things, help you to remember what Jesus did. I have a perfect written word of God that tells me exactly what Jesus did for me. You don't need an idol, a cross that's a curse, a physical image uh, in your hand, physical object, throughout your house. But you see that all through these Babel buildings. The other thing is, is they have pagan images in them. They have images of the Godhead. You have people have images of Mary, images of Jesus Christ, um, God the Father, the dove is a Holy Spirit. I've seen some buildings where they have all these different things like a cup, a uh, square with the cup, a square with this, a square that has the dove in it and everything. What is that? It's a pagan idol. What's going on there? It's not convenient for you to worship at home. It's not convenient for you to study the Bible on your own and have the Holy Spirit open the scriptures to you. No, 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 no. You've got to go to a Babel building, a church building. Why? And then they have all these pagan idols. Behold, your gods. They said there, Behold the gods that brought you out of Egypt. Behold the gods that can grant you eternal life. A lot of people can understand what I'm saying that's come out of those Babel buildings. Right? Third thing, which we just jumped into, um, notice it says, Made priests of the lowest of the people which were not of the sons of Levi. Only the, the tribe of Levi is part of the priesthood. Now today... The priesthood of the believer, uh, people who are truly saved today, is who I'm likening this to when it comes to Levi, those are people who are truly saved versus the lowest of the people is the lost world. What's going on in these Babel buildings? Men are putting men behind the pulpit, then saying you cannot question the man of God, singular, like he's the only man of God out there, you can't question him. Okay? He's not ordained by God, people say how do you know? Because they're telling you you can't question him. Okay? You can't judge according to the scriptures if this man is ordained of God. If what he's teaching lines up with the scriptures. What's his testimony? Is he truly saved? We're not allowed to, you're not allowed to do that in these Babel buildings. What's going on? Those men are being put there by men. And most of the people, a big good majority of them, standing behind these pulpits in these Babel buildings are lost. And they're promoting an antichrist. A false Christ. Mm -hmm. So we read uh, Kings, First Kings, twelve twenty-eight, and I specifically jumped ahead for a reason because that's what they try to tell you. It's no big deal. You can come to these buildings. It's no big deal. It's more convenient, you know, than having to go from different homes and and you know you having to clean your home up. Make sure you have a good clean home. Uh, your wife's being a good keeper at home, the husband's providing an, a home, and people are coming in to do Bible studies, It's and going to these parks and worshiping outdoors. I mean, that's just not that convenient. Let us take care of you. You know, We'll build a building, we'll take care of the building, and we'll, ask, we'll take care of it for you. So all you do is just drive up, wear your Sunday best. It's easy. But they don't tell you the real reason because they don't because Satan doesn't want you to know the real reason behind these Babel buildings. Now, we went to 1 Kings 12, 28. Let's go back to 1 Kings 12, 24. And let's get into context of what's really going on here. 1 Kings 12, 24. Thus saith the Lord, ye shall not go up nor fight against your brethren and the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this is the thing that is from me. They hearken therefore to the word of the Lord, and return to depart according to the word of the Lord. No fighting between uh, the tribes of Israel, between each other. Then Jeroboam built 
Shechem and Mount Ephraim, and dwelt therein, and went out from thence, and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, here's where we're getting to the heart of the matter, he said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. Right? You have the eleven tribes have their own king, and then the tribe of Judah has its king. So there's two kings. Right? Shall the kingdom return to the house of David? Let that sink in. Okay. Uh, what is that? Revelation says that Jesus has the keys of David. Uh, he's uh, David's a type of Christ. Uh, Jesus is from the lineage of King David. Return to the house of God. If his people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, that's where you're supposed to do it. Then shall the heart of this people turn again to their Lord. I know it's a lowercase l, Lord, but it says, their Lord. Even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Okay, who's the lowercase g God of this world? Satan. He doesn't want you returning to Jesus. People say, what do you mean people left Jesus? When Adam sinned and sin came into the world, Look at it as like there's a wall that got put between man and God. That's why Jesus came to reconcile us to God. We were enemies, now we can be friends with God, reconciling us to God. Satan doesn't want us reconciled to God. Okay? He doesn't want us returning to the house of David. Okay? Now, Jesus, remember, he created all things and for his pleasure they are and were created. Jesus is willing that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He wants people to return to him, go through him to be reconciled to, G to God through Jesus Christ. So we see there, shall the kingdom return to the house of David? Uh, these Babel buildings, are they pointing people to the real Jesus Christ, the capital L, Lord Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ, who is come in the flesh, the Godhead, the person Jesus Christ? The only person of the Godhead, Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ. Are they pointing them to false gods? Here's these gods that we made, that brought you out of Egypt. Here's the gods you should worship, the Trinity. Here's the gods you should worship, Mary and Jesus and God the Father as an old man. Hopefully this is getting in. And it says, if the people go up to do sacrifice to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, remember your body now is a temple for the Holy Ghost. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is all we need. So if you go to the cross, to Jesus Christ, to accept that sacrifice, that perfect sacrifice, then shall the hearts of this people again, uh, shall the hearts of this people turn again to the Lord. People get saved truly get saved. Mm -hmm. Now, I've always quoted this verse, and I'm going to do it again, because it gets really into what we're saying there. He made false gods. He built a different place where they weren't supposed to worship in. A different place, built false gods, and he pointed men that were lost, or in this case, in the, in the context here, men that weren't supposed to be part of the priesthood, and today, men that are lost. So 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. It is just too hard for you guys to go down to Egypt. What is it? It's too much for you to go to Jerusalem. It's just too much. Too much for you guys to study the Bible for yourselves. And have the Holy Ghost open it to you. You need the man of God. Singular. And it's just too much for you to worship at home. It's too much for you to worship out here. Beguiled Eve through his subtlety. They don't look in the scriptures and say, Hey, are these Babel buildings scripture? Do they go against scripture? No, they don't do that. Because they've been beguiled through subtlety. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. It's so simple. You have the Holy Spirit. He will open this book to you. There's things in here I still don't understand, but God has opened this book to me. 
Yes, I still learn from other brothers in Christ, uh, ministries here on YouTube. Um, but I learn myself. If they say something, I'm act you need to act like the Bereans and check the scriptures night and day to see if these things are so. I don't just take what they say for granted. I go, I'm here at my home already, and I look through the scriptures and see if what they're telling me is truth or is a lie. Okay? You don't want to be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Now, for if he that cometh preach another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel, which we have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Remember verse 7 says, they shall kill me. Ye might wear a bell with him. Where's Satan going to end up? Well, if you look in the book of Revelation, he's going to end up in the lake of fire. And he's going to try to take as many people with him as he can. Okay? And we're going to be standing there. We're not going to be the one killing them or throwing them in the lake of fire. But we're going to be standing there, I believe. Behind the throne or beside the throne, all of us bowing down to Jesus Christ. That Satan gets dragged in and gets tossed into the lake of fire. Okay. Verse 27 on 1 Kings 12, 27. They shall kill me. Now, remember those three things. False Jesus, Antichrist spirit. It's a false spirit. There's two spirits other than your own. You have the Holy Spirit and you have an Antichrist spirit in the world. Okay. True, false. Okay. You have another Jesus, okay? You have the, the capital L, Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ who is come in the flesh, the real Jesus Christ, and then you have an antichrist, a counterfeit Jesus. Okay? Then you have another gospel. You have the true gospel of Jesus Christ, and then you have false gospels to prevent you from coming to the true Jesus Christ. Remember those three things real quick. So now, I know we're jumping around in this section of 1 Kings, but I did this for a reason. You're just getting told one thing, but you don't see what's going on behind the scenes. Satan doesn't want people to get saved. So what's the easiest way to prevent people from getting saved? Building Babel buildings, promoting false gods, preaching false gospels, appealing. We're going to read here. I'm jumping ahead. How are people being attracted to these high places and these false gods? How are people getting attracted to him? 1 Kings 12, 32. So now we jump down to 32. Okay. And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month. It's a feast. On the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar, so did he in Bethel, sacrificing unto the calves that he had made. There's the first time. And he placed in Bethel the priest of the high place which he had made so he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the 15th day of the, each month even in the month which he had devised of his own heart wasn't of God of his own heart and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel and he offered upon the altar and burnt incense okay. three times you see he had made remember we talked about another Jesus another spirit Another gospel. Another Jesus that man has made. We've always been talking about this, brothers and sisters in Christ. They keep tearing Jesus down, and they're getting a Jesus. They want a Jesus that conforms to them and what they want to believe. They want to believe Jesus is just a created being, a brother of Satan. They have this religion. You want to believe he's just the archangel Gabriel manifest in the flesh? You have this religion. You want to believe he's just a prophet? You have this religion. You want to believe in a Jesus that's okay with sin and has a lighter attitude towards sin? I mean, what's the point of dying, him dying on the cross? I mean, sin isn't that big of a deal. We'll give you that, Jesus. Three times, he had made, he had made. The Trinity, you know. They've turned God the Father into a lowercase g, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He hath made, he hath made, he hath made. It's man-made. God in three persons, man-made. One in essence, man-made. Okay. And right there we talk about, notice he devised and ordained what those people uh, devised and ordained. It was all of his making, these Babel buildings. These so-called church buildings, they're the makings of men. You can't find it in Scripture. 
you can't sit there and say, hey, it's, it's ordained in the Bible. No, he had, he'd have devised of his own heart. Mm -hmm. What are these people's reasons when you question them church buildings? When you question the people about church buildings and try to bring truth to them, saying, hey, you're not to be building a building, calling that building a church, and then inviting both lost and saved to it. And like I said, all the buildings I've ever been into when I was growing up, and I'm almost positive from all the other brothers and sisters in Christ that talk about today how bad it's gotten, that there's false gods in every one. All right. Especially with the Trinity, people just rejecting the Godhead so they could have their Trinity. So, when you tell them and you try to preach to them about the Babel buildings, that they're not truth, what do you get from them? Me? I think it's good for me. I think it's okay for me. Um, myself, I, I think it's great for myself. I, I'm all for it. I think it's great. I think it's a good thing. People coming together and fellowshipping, and that's a whole other study. They're not fellowshipping, okay? Fellowship is prayer, reading the Bible together, studying the Bible together, uh, correcting one another, holding each other accountable to the Word of God, and then when there's people in need, prayer requests, people who need help with something, you're there to help the brethren, that's true fellowship. But that's not what goes on in these Babel buildings. And we who have been part of it and came out of it know that. So uh, you got me, myself, and I. Feelings, you get feelings from them. You get their opinions. Notice what's lacking, what's missing from all this. I, me, I think it's good. Myself, I actually go because I like it. I think it's great, you know. I feel that it's a good thing for us to come together. And, and my opinion is that what's missing from all of this? This right here. They'll try to grab from Hebrews and say, See, we're not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. But once again, when you hit them up and say, Hey, who's Hebrews written to? Well, I feel this, and my opinion... They don't like the answer. Hebrews is written to Hebrews in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be so important to have fellowship in the time of Jacob's trouble. Big time. And I'm not against fellowship. I'm against these Babel buildings. As we just read, you can easily compare these Babel buildings to the high places in the Old Testament. Is that where they were supposed to be doing sacrifice and worshiping the Lord? No, it isn't. Okay. Today, our temple is a, our body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. He that worship him must worship him in truth, spirit and in truth. So, uh, Babel buildings, what do they do to attract people? You saw up here, they're doing a big feast. They're going to do a big feast. They're putting on a big show. You know, built a good altar. I mean, altar calls, where is that in scripture? And he ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar a burst incense. So he did all this huge elaborate show because they like, you know, the, the ordinances. You know, they like the signs. The Jews require a sign. They like big physical shows. Okay. So what are they doing these Babel buildings? Well, guess what? We have our sports night, movie night, video game night. We've got potlucks. Uh, we've got camps that we do for for children we got programs for the children you know and um, we do concerts they're supposed to be Christian concerts but you can't tell the difference between those concerts and rock concerts like secular concerts anymore and on and on and on mm -hmm. Romans 16 18 for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly and by good words and fair speeches deceive the heart of the simple. What's going on here? They offer the people what they want as long as it isn't the Lord Jesus Christ and His perfect written word. They'll give them anything except that. Why? Because they're all but their own bellies. They don't want to serve our Lord Jesus Christ but their own bellies by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Philippians 3.18 For many walk after whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction whose God is their belly 
and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Earthly things. They do things purposely to appeal to the flesh, just like this person was doing, this, this king. And put on a big feast, a huge feast, a big show to appeal to the flesh, to appeal to the people. You know what appeals to the lost world? The number one thing I'm seeing that appeals to the lost world is this. You can be a Christian and still have the world. You can still be a Christian and keep your flesh. You can be carnally minded, walking after the flesh, and be a Christian. You mean I don't have to change after salvation? You mean I can still do whatever I want? I can still continue in sin? I get to still be the final authority? It's about my feelings and opinions? I can be as God's knowing good and evil? That's what appeals to the lost world. You can have your flesh and be a Christian. And that's what these Babel buildings offer people. That's what a lot of these false uh, YouTube channels do also that teach false gospels. They say you can have your flesh and be a Christian. You can keep your sin and love your sin and be your own God, basically. Now, let's see. The Babel buildings appeal to the flesh and conform to the world. Why? To keep people in the world. Keep people in and of the world. Remember, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. So it's to keep people of the world and not turning to the one true Lord Jesus Christ, as I just mentioned. It's just head belief. It's just head belief. Guess what? You have head belief? Yeah, guess what? Party time! You can have your flesh and be a Christian. Just go back to having party time. Go back to indulging the flesh. That's what's going on. So, what does God think about these high places? Well, I want to, I'm going to say church buildings, high places. Leviticus 26:13, and I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcass upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you. Now before you think thing, you're saying you're being so harsh, you're being so harsh. Guess what's going to happen in the time of Jacob's trouble? Satan's already taken over all these Babel buildings. They basically already worship Satan in these Babel buildings as a counterfeit Jesus. What's going to happen in the time of Jacob's trouble? He's going to destroy all the high places. These buildings are going to be destroyed. Even Mystery Babylon's going to eventually get destroyed. Satan's going to set himself up in the temple and, and claim to be God. He's going to cause the sacrifices of oblation to cease. And cut down your images. The 300 million man army goes out with the Antichrist. And cast your carcass upon the carcass of your idols. Jesus opens his mouth. A sword comes out. Wipes out the 300 million man army. My soul shall abhor you. If you're falling into the trap of these Babel buildings, you need to get out. Right? You need to get out of these high places. That's not where God wants you. If you truly get saved, and I've known people who've gotten saved while going to these buildings, they get online, find a YouTube uh, Bible-believing, God-fearing ministry. They come across someone who's a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman that preaches the true gospel to them. There's people who've gotten saved while going to these Babel buildings, and they've come out of them. God opens your eyes. You start looking at what they're doing and looking at Scripture, and you're like, it's not lining up. Then you realize you're not getting fed. Then you come to the point where you realize you're not even being pointed to the real Jesus Christ in these Babel buildings. Even the ones that claim to be a King James Bible believers, oftentimes they're not even pointing you to the real Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, put this over. So that's it for this study. I just was reading through it and I was always I was curious and I wanted to learn about the high places. What's the big deal about the high places? It's a place where you're not to be worshiping God. You're not supposed to be doing in the Old Testament animal sacrifices to God in high places. That's what the heathens do. That's what the lost world does. Okay? True Bible-believing, God-fearing men down through the centuries did not use Babel buildings, physical temples. They did not fellowship with the lost world. Okay? And they didn't have pagan idols. Where did that come from? 
uh, false religions all the way back to the high places we see here. We like to say it's just the Catholic Church. It goes all the way back to Mystery Babylon in the Old Testament. False gods. So if you're in these Babel buildings, you need to get out. Okay. I know a brother in Christ does some good studies against the Babel buildings, but I'm telling you, I was a part of them. Um, you know, I did programs for, I was part of the programs for the children, uh, worship music, you know, satanic style worship music, it appealed to the flesh, and you listen to a lot of the things, when I go back, when I first got saved, after a while, I, I was still listening to them, I started going through them and comparing them to the scripture, a lot of the songs we sung actually go against scripture. Okay, we like to sing about the love of Jesus, but the Bible says, if a man love me, he will keep my words. When did we ever sing about the love of God's word? His perfect written word? We didn't. We just kept saying, we love Jesus, we love Jesus. With our flesh and feelings and opinions. True love of Jesus Christ is, are you doing your best to keep this? To live a godly life. Sanctification. Personal relationship with Jesus Christ. All right. So... Like I said, I can go on and on, but biggest thing for you guys to get out of this, brothers and sisters in Christ, um, the high places are so-called church buildings. I say neither. They're one and the same. Okay? Don't fall for that trap. Okay? Come out of those places, start getting a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, growing with Jesus Christ. Uh, there's very few, but there's some Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries still on YouTube. Um, there's still brethren out there that you can email, uh, talk to on the phone. I understand if you're blessed and they're, you got a few of you in the same area, praise the Lord. But fellowship in this time is not, it's getting harder and harder to have fellowship. That's why I get on to people when they say, well, Hebrews says we're commanded to. No, it's commanding the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble to have fellowship, those who get saved because they need the support from each other in that time period. It's the worst time period in history is the time of Jacob's trouble. Today, having fellowship is a good thing. The Bible talks about good fellowship, but we're not commanded to have fellowship. Why? Because I believe God knew what it was going to be like in these last days. We're so stretched thin we're spread out all over the world, and there's very few of us truly saved, Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women left in this world. We're waiting to get that last soul saved, and up we go. So, uh, just want to say grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you in Christ Jesus. Thank you for watching.